Hey friends, this is Marilyn from tarotclarity.com and I'm happy to be back after just a, a few days. I'm, I'm trying my very best to be part of the land of the living again. <laughs> anyway, I have been so enamored by this deck that I showed in my last two, I think last two videos. It was a two-part video of the um, Portrait of Paris historic playing cards, which were put out by our friends over at Artists and Tarot. The deck reigns from 1735 to 1751. So I did do two videos on the deck. Uh, but I really, I love the deck, you know, it, it's uh, um, fascinated me to the point where I want to use it for divination or for reading, interpreting the cards. However, you know, it's not a tarot deck. And so for those of us who are tarot people, right, and then we see a deck of playing cards, I, I, I think probably for some of us, the temptation to interpret these cards is and, or not temptation, but the inclination to interpret cards would be what we would be inclined to do, right? Because we're tarot readers, so we already see the cards, you know, as, as, a, as a, a, a possible means of tapping into something. And we're already somewhat familiar with the cards. I mean, um, I know there are different ways of interpreting um, playing cards as there are different ways of interpreting tarot. But with tarot, I think there's more of a common thread. Um, and even if you don't read the cards exactly as another person does, um, you're more likely to have more things in common with their interpretation. Even if you come to it at the, with a different understanding somehow, um, you, you could probably, you know, when I see other people do readings, you know, if they're a proficient reader, you know, I, I can, I can understand their logic and their thinking. It might not have been the conclusion I might have come up with, but I'm just a different person who was brought to see another aspect, just as when people see my card readings and if they think of things completely that I don't. Um, you know, I was the person who interpreted the cards originally, so it was my hand to see. But other people, you know, would take a, an interest in how I interpret the cards, and then they would see something completely different. And that would be the way they were meant. That was the message they would be meant to project to someone, or, you know, communicate to someone. But I don't know if there's that kind of thread with playing cards. You know, I've tried to learn playing cards you know, like the right way, you know, like through books or learning, you know, and that's not the right way. It's, it's a way. But um, every book I had, they you did it a different way. It wasn't like even remotely easy, you know, to pick up, pick one, you know, pick a method. So I just decided it's just as legit for me to have my way of interpreting these cards, you know, and, um, and I really thought that this deck in particular would be a good one to um, sit down in earnest and try to come up with personality tra traits, for example, for the um, court cards, because all the court cards in this deck have been assigned a historic or mythological name, right? So you have major identif identifying features for these cards. You don't have to guess what they might mean or you don't necessarily have to combine the position with the suit like maybe we would with tarot right um if you go by the suggestion of some of the names you, you know you look up the you know the person's name in history or mythology or whatever and then you learn a little bit about that individual and so now you have an identifying thing for that for that card. And once you know it, you know, once you like begin to see, you know, the, the, the Jack of uh, Spades is Hajir, right? Once you start to see him like that, then you could use any deck of cards, whether it has his name or not, because you already know who he is, right? And what it, rep and what it represents. And um, like with tarot, when you know, if there's a possibility of one of the higher trump cards, the, the you know the uh, triumph cards. You know, we you know I've come from a school of thought where I try to understand the history because by understanding something at its cellular level or at its lowest 
you know, you know, simplistic or when it was born kind of way, then it all makes sense and it's all, you know, um, you know, fits, you know, it all fits a narrative that we can understand, you know, when we um, try to understand the cards. You know, but the problem with that is that we can't really ever really truly 100% know the original concept or idea behind each one of the triumph cards. You know, we have ideas, we have, you know, people who have, you know, researched that and, and, and were, have, you know, brought back, you know, you know, possibilities for origin stories of the cards. But it comes down to kind of, it may or may not really be true, or it may be close to the truth. Um, what, you know, is, you know what I'm saying? So there's, we don't have the benefit of knowing who, n not necessarily who they, the cards were based on. It's just that we try to come up with an origin story that makes sense, or at least I have. I've, I've tried to come up with origin stories for each of the triumph cards so that it makes sense. And I've, you know, researched that quite a bit. And if for those of you who are not familiar with my numerology playlist, I highly recommend that you take a look over at it because I go into um, at least the first 10 triumph cards and their numeric value and association with the complying pip number card, or just the just the number in general, you know, and a, a, its corresponding number in general. So that is my more or less the origin story that makes sense to me about tarot cards. But these playing cards, their names are right on the cards, so we don't have to go through all that, and we have these personality things um, that we could um, reference. So. Um, I said I was going to do a demonstration reading, but I want to just show you where I'm coming from with these cards, and the next next video will be a demonstration reading. But I want to show um, who these court individuals are. I, I have a cheat sheet with you know the information written down, and I'll read what I have for each one, so that you know if those of you who may be inclined to try to try your hand at you know reading these. Um, interpreting these, it might be helpful to know who the court card people are and a little story about each of them. So I figured I'd do a video on that, you know, just, you know, give you a rundown on that. And then um, if there is time, then, you know, I could do a rundown on the pips, but um, there probably won't be time. But again, my numerology playlist would apply. So you know, I would highly suggest you do that. So I'm going to flip the cards and we're going to go through the, um, the court cards. And uh, I'm going to just read from my cheat sheet, so I don't think I'm like a, a, a genius <laughs> that I remembered all this. I'm reading it from my own cheat sheet. And I got this information readily right off of, you know, um, a Google search and, and, you know, most of the time from just Wikipedia, you know, just general information that anyone can get, you know. So it's not like I did great, great, great research, <laughs> you know going through my archives of history books. And I mean, I just took, you know, um, the understanding of these characters, you know, uh, as it was written for us to understand. Okay, so here are the cards and here is my cheat sheet. Hogier, H-O-G-I-E-R, is depicted as the Jack of um, Pikes or Spades. And the only thing I found on him was it's a reference to Holger the Dane, who was an antagonist of Charlemagne. So we know Charlemagne is one of the kings in this um, set, right? So when the Jack of Spades appears with the King of Hearts, we know that, you know, one was a protagonist of the other. So you have that dynamic and that kind of a relationship. All right. Pallas. Pallas was the daughter of Triton. She's, she and Athena were childhood friends, and Athena accidentally killed her during a childhood competition. Athena um, eventually took on the name of Pallas uh, as a sign of her enormous grief at having killed her friend. Now we have David. He united uh, all the tribes of Israel, and his son Solomon expanded his empire. 
So he was a powerful man. Okay, we're moving on to the suit of hearts. Lahir, I think, it, I don't know how it's pronounced properly, but the name looks to be like Lahir or Lahir, was a military figure who, along with St. Jean d'Arc or Joan of Arc, um, she, you know, he fought side by side with her. By all accounts, uh, that doesn't mean that he was a really great guy. He was known to behave with great cruelty. Um, the French uh, I can't read my own handwriting. But at any rate, um, oh, it, it seems as though he, okay, the French uh, give him credit for having designed the four suited packs of cards. He did seem to have um, invented a card game called Piquet. So I don't know how, how, how much, you know, I, I, I don't know how much truth, uh, you know, just like when we try to describe something about like the, the, you know, the female Pope and who she might have been, you know, there's a couple theories. So, you know, pick one, you know, because we don't really know which one is the truth. And it's the same with them, we, these cards here too. And as a matter of fact, it's known that the cards were invented with the courts invented first and then adding the names was an afterthought maybe like by 100 or 200 years so the cards were not the court cards were not designed with any particular historic or mythological um reference that was just a novelty that came later and you know the, the names were put on the cards and it probably was um it probably definitely made people think of a certain type of person. If it's referencing Jude, you know, uh, Judith or, you know, King Char, uh, you know, Charlemagne or, uh, whoever, right? Okay. The queen of hearts, Judith. Okay. Well-respected widow who was not above treachery to help the people she loves. In fact, the two of hearts, uh, the Queen of Hearts tends to represent feeling of unconditional love. Okay, Charles, or possibly Charlemagne. Um, he was a conqueror, an emperor of, of the Romans. He actually died of a lung infection in the year 814. However, there are all kinds of stories about his the way he died. After the death of two of his three sons, Charles began to show signs of mental imbalance. Uh, rumor suggested Charles took his own life, you know, which is why he became known as the Suicide King in later cards. You know, they embellished the story, but that's not really true. He died from an infection. Um, so the, you know, there's myth, you know, built around the idea that, you know, he killed himself. And then, of course, you know, that, that that's when the story goes that they changed the the king of hearts to show somebody stabbing himself in his head, you know, that kind of thing. But not, it's not probably true. It's just a story, you know, um, because we know Charles, Charles, I mean, didn't die that way anyway. Okay. Um, clubs. Now the card says G Paris and, you know, it seems to be an identification card for the either printer or, you know, the manufacturer of the, the engraver or whatever. Um, so G Paris is, is more, more of like a name, I think a brand name or something like that, you know, rather than who it's referencing in, in history. But most people associate the Jack of clubs with Lancelot. Um, uh, Typically, the Jack of Clubs represents Lancelot, close friends with King Arthur. Uh, he, you know, uh, Lancelot had an, a love affair with Guinevere, who happened to be Arthur's wife. And, um, so, you know, so he was considered a great knight because he was a great friend to um, King Arthur. But then, of course, he had an adulterous affair with the king's wife, or, had, or at least had those ideas in his head. I don't know if they acted on it or not, but, um, I guess it's immaterial. He was a good deed doer, except for his adulterous affair with Guinevere, who was Arthur's wife. 
And then the next card, Argene, possibly an anagram that just was an anagram for Regina, which means queen, could be something like that. It is argued sometimes that it might be a reference to Argea, who was a princess. She was the mother of twins and one of the boys um, is the one who built the ship Argo, the story of Jason and the Argonauts. And we have Alexander, Alexander the Great, an ancient uh, king of Macedon, undefeated in battle, and one of history's most successful commanders. Okay, we have the Jack of Diamonds associated with Hector. Hector was a hero during the Trojan War. He appears in the Iliad, or his exploits, you know, appears in the Iliad. Um, which was an epic poem of Greek. Okay, Rachel. Now, Rachel could be more than one person. Rachel could be uh, wife of Jacob or wife of Sir, G Sir Gawain, um, and that wife's name was Ragnell. If she is the wife of David, um, Then, you know, her story is that Jacob had married her and her sister, her sister first. Um, her sister's name was Leah. And uh, unfortunately for, she was this one. Um, Rachel was Jacob's favorite, preferred wife of the two sisters. He, this was his preferred, his preferred wife. Unfortunately, she died in childbirth, making her a tragic figure of womanhood and motherhood. Now, if this doesn't represent um, Rachel, the, the wife of Jacob, it might, she might possibly represent Ragnell, who was the wife of Sir Gawain. Now, um, Gawain was a knight of the round table. Um, She was the much beloved wife of Sir Gawain. He adored her. She appeared as a hag. It was like one of these kind of fairy tale stories where she appears as a hag, but because, you know, Gawain, you know, um, and his, you know, people he all said the right answers to, to like a curse, to answer the curse and break the curse. It turns out that she's incredibly beautiful and they like really were very, very happy, but she didn't live real long. And, um, uh, so in a, in a sense, you know, she is also a tragic figure. And then Caesar was the first leader of Rome, born in ancient, uh, of ancient pedigree and prestigious pedigree, but lost everything due to a marriage that went wrong. I don't know if it was his marriage that went wrong or the marriage of his parents that went wrong and he was left out of everything. Um, he was an orator. And uh, his kind of, you know, motto and way of doing things was take all and leave nothing. He fathered a son with Cleopatra. He was a dictator, although he did manage to bring some favorable reforms in his very brief reign before he was assassinated after one year. So that's the lowdown on these individuals. Um, I don't know if you want to, like, use these, you know, it just, it just helps if you're going to try to identify these, these people as people and their names right, right on the cards, you might as well use those as their origin stories. However, that's not to say you can completely ignore the names and just make your own association by blending the, the person and the suit and come up with whatever personality traits or, you know, you know, personality features of, of, of any of them. But it's just, you know, more than one way to do it, and they're both valid. I think this is long enough. It's 20 minutes already, and so I think the next time will be... Um, I'm not going to do a rundown of numbers and suits because you can see my numerology playlist that I referenced a couple times. But um, I'll probably explain how I come come up with things and my associations in the in the next video. So I'll do a I'll do a demonstration video the next video using this. And for those of you who tune into me just because you want to see tarot, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you know, I don't I don't go off on tangents too often, but this deck is so pretty and I really want to use it for uh, 
interpretation. And some of you may also be interested in just doing interpretation with playing cards. And so this is kind of a friendly, if I can do it, you can do it kind of thing. Um, uh, you know, so give, give us this, give us all a little bit of a, a friendly, um, a friendly way to learn you know, to, uh, to, to read these cards. I'm sorry. I'm not making a lot of sense, but, um, until next time, friends, peace and stay well.